Okay, welcome everyone for this edition of Bra Brazilian Algebraic Job Seminar. It's my pleasure today to introduce Federico Qualbrum from Universidad de Buenos Aires. And um, Federico will talk about the unfolds of uh, the algebra. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mauricio, for your kind words. Uh, indeed, I will be talking today about uh, unfoldings of, of Lie algebraids. To do so, I'll begin <clears throat> discussing what I mean with, of course, with unfoldings. Um, to me, the word unfolding is used in a sense that goes back to the to the culture, to the work of uh, foliations, um, specifically to the work uh, of, uh, of both Jean-François Matei and Tatsuo Suwa that gave uh, this um, concept of, of unfolding of a foliation, which is closely related to the concept of a deformation of a foliation, but it's not quite the same. So I'll begin discussing uh, that right now. Uh, <clears throat> and it, to me, a family of, uh, of holomorphic foliations, of possibly singular holomorphic foliations over a, a smooth morphism. So we, we have a, a family of, of smooth varieties and a family of uh, holomorphic foliations built up on top of this uh, family of varieties is just a, a subshift TF of, of the relative tension shift such that the co-kernel of this inclusion is, uh, is flat over the base and such that the subshift is involutive. It's closed under Lie bracket and then under commutators of, of derivations, right? Uh, I recall here that uh, the relative tension shift is just the dual of the relative Keller differentials. And so, <clears throat> uh, well, I did not um, say it so, but every time I'm thinking about uh, some X or S or whatever, I'm really thinking about, um, about schemes over the complex numbers and even more so pretty much X uh, this morphism, most of the time, I will be thinking about uh, not only a smooth morphism, but probably a projective morphism. But still, uh, I mean, with all this, I'm working, I, I'm meaning I'm, I'm working in the category of, um, of regular varieties or schemes. Um, so, the thing is that um, the relative tension shift, the dual of the relative Keller differentials, and so the, um, the relative tangent is a subshift of the tangent of x, say, over of the absolute tangent of, of x, say, the, the tangent of x over, over the complex numbers. Uh, so uh, it's just to, to recall that this will be actually this will be the shift of, of vector um, fields that are tangent to the fibers of these morphisms, right? Um, on the other hand, if I have a family of uh, homomorphic foliations like I have right here, an unfolding of uh, this family is a foliation on the total space X such that well, for a generic point, the, the, the um, dimension of the tangent space of this big foliation, it, it's strictly bigger. So the leaves are, of this uh, foliations TF are strictly bigger than, than the leaves of the, of the family, right? Uh, Throughout the, the talk, we'll be 
throughout the talk will be referring to families with a subscript of S, like, like here, and to unfoldings without any subscript, subscript, like here. So this is an unfolding and this is a family over which this unfolding uh, develops and folds. And uh, the key point uh, for, a, for an, a, a big foliation to be an unfolding of a family is that one can recover the, the subshift, the, the original subshift of, of families of distributions as, um, as those vector fields that belongs to the, to, the, to the big foliation, but are also tangent to the fibers of, of the morphism pi, right? So the idea is when you have, it's very hard, uh, it was very hard for me. I, I couldn't manage to do, a, to draw here. And it's uh, quite hard for me to do drawings in, um, in like this in, in by Zoom, but I will try to explain as, as best I, as I can. The idea is, when you have a family of foliations, you really are varying the, the parameters of the differential equations. But the solutions that are the leaves can, can change drastically at, at some times. Instead, when you have an unfolding of a family of foliations, you're kind of gluing the leaves of each member of this family into big leaves that are that have a, um, a direction that is transversal to the fibers of the family. You're not only varying, you're not only um, varying the, the parameters of the differential equations, you're also gluing the leaves like in a in a transversal way to the to the fibers of the morphism. So, for example, uh, well, to, to see this in, in, in another way, to, to see the difference between the, the concept of a, of a family and the concept of an unfolding, we can look at uh, families of co-dimension one foliations, for instance, in a, in a constant family of varieties. So I have just the variety Y. And let's suppose the parameter space is, uh, is the ring of, it's a spectrum of the dual numbers. So in this case, well, the uh, uh, tangent shift of the foliations like this, the distribution of uh, foliation is defined locally by, by Anna. And by the annihilation of a, of a red to one form because, well, because uh, I have a subsheaf of a generic codimension one, a subsheaf of this sheaf. And so I can, I can define that by, as the annihilator of an element locally at least, I can do that as the annihilator of an element in the, the dual shift here. The dual shift is the shift of uh, relative one forms. So the, the condition of involutivity translates as the condition of the local one form being integrable. And so what this gives is I need a relative one from here, which is integrable. Well, a relative one from in this setting, in the setting of S being the, the spectrum of the dual numbers, is just a one from omega in Y, another eta also in Y over Y. And, and a one from a relative one from it's, it's of uh, it. It looks like omega plus epsilon theta, where epsilon is, is this element here, the, the nilpotent element. And so when you set up the, the, the integrability equation, 
you can translate this equation in terms of uh, an equation between omega and, and eta, which we will not do here, but just to keep in mind uh, what is the difference, uh, just to picture a little bit what is the difference between family and unfolding. If I have an unfolding of uh, in the same in the same setting, I have a trivial family of varieties over the dual numbers, and now I have an, an unfolding of affiliation in a central fiber, for instance. Then instead of being the annihilator, this this distribution here, TF, which is a sort of a like a big foliation, a, fol a, a distribution with um with um with big uh, tangent spaces um the this distribution will be defined locally by the annihilation of uh, one form omega in this should not be here not a relative one form like it says like it says here but uh not really, this should not be S, but C, an absolute one form. The one form you get from, the one form you get uh, by looking at the Keller differentials over C. So this kind of thing, it will be, It will be of the shape omega plus epsilon eta, which is just like this. But here, as we are not taking relative differentials, but differentials over C, there is also one form that we can call d epsilon, right? And, and a general one form, a general local one form on, on y times s will be of the shape omega plus epsilon eta plus h the epsilon. And to be in integrability here will be, will give some other uh, equations and this time on omega and eta and h, right? Um, well, if, if I were to take the, if I want to recover the family that the family of foliations that this unfolding is uh, is building on top of, uh, I would get a family of foliations defined just by. Just by this datum. Right. So these two terms here um, defines the family T, uh, the family over S that this unfolding is uh, is is building. It's built upon. Um, so. Um, just to, to, to have in mind that um, foliations, uh, families of foli unfoldings of foliations are something that are built upon families of foliations. There's ways of gluing the, the leaves of each, of each member of the family. Yeah, Raimundo? Yeah, so, so I've been wondering about, about kind of like this. So if, if I push forward this TFS, the family, down to s uh i wonder i wonder if if a connection on that object is the same thing as this fully uh, as an yes unfolding. absolutely yes oh, yes okay. absolutely okay, that, that sounds more, okay thanks um so yeah you have already understood the whole talk uh yes the talk is about more or less what you just said how exactly you can recover uh, an unfolding from a connection and a connection from an unfolding. So and that's exactly the, 
the point. I mean, that's exactly the idea. You have sort of like a transversal direction in which you want to, along which you want to glue, for instance, in this case of foliations, you want to glue leaves. But uh, we want to do similar things with, um, we want to do similar things with uh, algebroids. So, in a, okay. So, um, well, just to, to check some things, uh, a family of, of singular holomorphic, the algebras or really of, of algebraic algebroids, of algebraids over a scheme is uh, just a, a reflexive shift. We take it reflexive for technical reasons. Um, and, uh, and an anchor that whose, whose target is the, again, the shift of uh, relative shift, the relative tangent shift. And uh, a linear map which, such that they verify the axioms of, um, of a Lie algebra. There's nothing very new here. Well, to take the, um, the concept of an unfolding to the, uh, to the, to, to the algebra is, we, we, we take, um, we take similar definitions as that of, um, as in the case of, um, of, of foliations. So we take a bigger algebra that is one that has an inclusion, one whose uh, whose anchor is no longer whose whose anchor goes no longer targets no longer to the relative tension shift but to the absolute tension shift, and such that you can recover the original family in which this uh, unfolding is built as the as the pre-image of the relative tension shift. So this is just exactly like in the case of, um, exactly like in the case of um, foliations. Um, so is, is this with the rank? Um, and so the, um, to have an unfolding of, uh, of an algebra, it gives, gives one this kind of, of diagram, which I like to keep in mind a lot of the time because, well, I think it's useful. Um, so you have here the, this here is the, the diagram of the original family. This is the anchor that the kernel of the anchor is an OX linear Lie algebra. Um, and so one have an inclusion here from, from the family to the algebra that glue this family together. And you have an extension of the, of the anchor. This, this, this old squares are commutative here. And this implies that the, the unfoldings carry exactly the same kernel of the anchor as the, sub, as the original family. Um, and therefore, we have an inclusion here uh, from the, the this quotient to the pullback of the of the tension shift of the base, right? Um, I, I recall this this uh, column here, the rightmost column. Uh, this is just reflecting the the canonical short exact sequences of uh, of Keller differential. Uh, it's the dual of the canonical uh, short of that exact sequence of Keller differentials. Um, well, this remark here in Spanish is just saying that uh, the kernel of the anchor, it's actually an OX Lie algebra. Um, and as a definition, we, we, we say the, the unfolding to be transversal, to be completely transversal to the fibers, if this arrow here is an isomorphism. Uh, this, this is definition will imply that um, 
this definition would imply, as Raimundo was was uh, observing, that um, for each transversal direction, I have more or less a unique way to glue the different members of the family of algebraids. Um, So, for example, if uh, if I have a, a family of um, if if my algebraic family is actually a family of foliations, I pretty much recover the the concept of an unfolding of a foliation because things carry pretty much a verbatim the same way. Uh, it doesn't give anything anything new in this in this respect, but uh, one might wonder whether the concept of an unfolding of foliations it's all I all I get uh, when talking of unfoldings of algebraids. Uh, it is not the case, so I want to explain in some detail the example of uh, of the algebraid with the trivial anchor. So I have a, a, a Lie algebra sheaf of OX Lie algebras A sub, sub S. I have here in this, in here I have an, an isomorphism and here I have the zero arrow. And I want to discuss what would, um, what would um, an unfolding of such a datum be? So if we look at the, at the diagram here, here I have zero, but I have to complete the zero in some, I can complete the zero in, in many non-trivial ways. Even more so if I want this to be, if I want the unfolding to be transversal and I want this to be an isomorphism, then I surely cannot have this uh, this big anchor as also at the zero morph morphism. I have to give it some non-trivial way of, uh, of extending this into an unfolding. Um, so in the in the case this is um, this is transversal, so this is an isomorphism, I actually have an exact short sequence of, of sheaves like this. Um, well, as a remark, I want to recall that uh, this morphism here, this morphism uh, here, it's not a Lie algebra morphism, okay? This has uh, some sort of, uh, well, this has, <laughs> of course, uh, and the structure of a Lie algebra, this not so much, but this is not a Lie algebra morphism. And so this here is not a Lie algebra morphism. So a priori we do not, this uh, short exact sequences, sequence is not a short exact sequence of, uh, of Lie algebra. But we, in order to study this example, we will get around this, uh, this obstacle. And uh, to make things even easier, Let's suppose the algebra G is an abelian on the algebra. So in this uh, example, in this example, um, I have really nothing but uh, a family of sheaves, a family of sheaves parametrized by S. And this is my, and I give it a trivial, the trivial structure of a Lie algebra. And I want to do some, I want to see what an unfolding of that very trivial example is. I want to show you that this is the unfolding of a trivial example is not a trivial thing. Um, and so now the 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 above this diagram translate to this other diagram, uh, where moreover this algebra G is abelian. And um And I want to show this 
if G is an abelian algebra, it would trivial anchor. So it's the most trivial example one can think of. And X is a trivial family. Well, in the case that uh, this, this actually this, this um, sheaf fam fam family of sheaves is a family of sheaves with the trivial R1 pi lower star. Um, any unfolding of G will define a flat connection on the push forward of G. Uh, so how do we do with this? Well, to, to, to check this out, we take, um, we take the biggest sheaf we can take here in a sense in a, such that uh, this uh, Latin A will be a Lie algebra and such that this short exact sequence here will be a short exact sequence of Lie algebras. Now, this Lie algebras won't be OX linear, but they will be OS linear. They will be linear in, uh, with respect to the basic functions, to the functions of the, of the parameter space uh, morphism. Well, um, just to, to, um, to look at this from another point of view, uh, let's suppose we have, we, we've, um, we've set with some analytical local coordinates. So we can watch a thing at these things uh, in coordinates. So uh, a typical tangent field will be of this, uh, will be expressed like this, will be written like this. Um, so um, a relative tangent vector field one that belongs to this subshift would be one where the where where these signs do not appear at all. So one where the G's are all zero, right? Um, and so I want to, if you if you look at this, how how is that I build up this uh, short exact sequence? here on top of it, well, I just take the, I just take the, the sections of this uh, pullback, just the sections that are constant along the fibers of the, of the morphism pi. So I take the pi minus one of uh, TS, not the pi upper star. And I just, Take the the, um, the pullback of this diagram here. And I can define the I can define A as the subshift of this curvy A uh, such that the anchor goes to goes to uh, to sections of this that are constant along the fibers of the morphism. So which are the sections of these sort of things that are constant along the fibers of um, which are the sections of this uh, of this A of this curvy A which are constant uh, whose anchor is constant along the fiber where well they are the the sections of A whose anchor are locally written like this so um, if I take the projection to the pi upper star of TS of, of something that is written locally like this, well, the projection is just forgetting about everything that, that appears in this place and just looking at uh, everything that appears in this sum. And if I want everything that appears in this sum to belong to this shift pi minus one of TS, well, I must, um, what I'm asked to uh, ask for is this section here. This, uh, yeah, this uh, G, this G here must not depend on the on the coordinate y. So there, they must be there. They must be actually um, local sections of um, 
functions on S. Um, so if we call this curly T, the sheaf of pi minus one modules generated by local sections going to pi minus one TS via this. So I call curly T this kind of, of things. These guys here are the ones that belong to, to curly T. Whoop. Right? So by definition, curly T is just the, the shift of uh, pi minus one OS models, the shift of OS models generated by things like, like this. Um, so with this in mind, this curly T is actually uh, a lean, it's preserved by brackets against uh, the relative tangent shift. And uh, one can check this uh, locally, right, easily. And so this implied that this short exact sequence is the short exact sequence of, of Lie algebras. So I have shifts of, of Lie algebras over X and a short, short exact sequence of, uh, of these shifts. Now, if I, if, if I know that, uh, that this first derived uh, push forward is zero, then I have a short exact sequence on the push forward of this uh, of these shifts, and it's still a short exact sequence of uh, it's still a short exact sequence of of Lie algebras also. Um, and so. As uh, G is an Albanian Lie algebra, so it's pi, uh, so is the push push forward of G uh, a shift of Abelian Lie algebra, and therefore the the structure here of a uh, of a Lie algebra of of the push forward of A is um, is an extension of this as uh, it's an Abelian extension of the tangent shift of the base. And if one writes everything down, what an abelian extension of Sorry, a shift uh, of an I'm abelian. A, I'm a bit lost. So, so this A on top was by inverse of OS linear, wasn't it? Yes. So the, the, oh, so, the, so this sequence that you have on the bottom of the page now is OS linear. Lie yes. So this, this, pi, this is not a Lie algebra. This pi star of a. It's just a, it's it's an OS linear algebra. Lie algebra. Yes. Ah. Okay. Um. But it, but it, um, it's kind of really strange to look at an OS no, no. linear Lie algebra with a map to something that is not. Yeah. Um. Let's think. Let's think about. It. No, I think. Uh, um, I, I don't think I. I don't think A is always linear. Oh, really. okay. So this the sequence. No, but uh, what it's, I I I mean so yeah A is definitely no always linear because T S it's definitely no not always linear. Right. That's that's the thing. So so the, the sequence that you have on top from G to A, so. I, I'm, I'm, I'm lost as to what is, what is, so you take A to be some extension of pi inverse TS by G. Yeah. So, and this A is um, um, pi inverse of OS Lie algebra. Again, what? This S? So A, A, this A here um, yeah. uh, uh, is, is an pi inverse of OS Lie algebra. Uh, no. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know about that. Really. So, so, 
whatever what okay so the the bottom the bottom line what you wanted is that this pi star of a is an actual Lie algebra oh, on uh, an os Lie algebra yeah okay so no but it it won't be it it will be an a Lie algebra over s yes it okay, won't good. be a OS linear at all. That's that's before. correct. So the question is whether or not it was an, an OS linear droid. But the thing is that I don't understand how you get A then. So this A is canonical. So is the, 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 the top A. Because that's the one that you want to construct. The top and, A. Yeah. So A yes. Is, yeah. So I build the top A, a from this. A yeah. Top A is built upon this. Diagram. It's just a pullback of. It's just are just the local sections of curvy A. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. So now I understand. Yeah, and that of course is okay. Yeah. The Lyell droid. Okay. Thank. Thanks. That, that, okay. Thanks. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no. Um, I thank you. That was an interesting question. Um. So. Uh, right. In the. In the end of it. If you write down what what it what this means to what it means to, for this to be an abelian ex extension of the tangent shift of uh, of S, it just means that uh, that the pi that push forward of G uh, has it has a, a flat connection uh, as a shift over S. So if we want to ask ourselves whether this is the only way of getting uh, an unfolding of a family of sheaves. I don't know the complete answer, but I know it's pretty, pretty straightforward that if G is, um, it's, if G is a family of, of sheaves that are globally generated, you can work everything backwards. And so we have this proposition, which I want, um, for which I won't be given any proof. But um, if besides having R1 pi lower start equal to zero, G is, uh, is a family of uh, globally generated sheaves, then we can work everything backwards and from a flat connection on, on the push forward of G, we can build an unfolding of G as a as a trivial D algebra. Um, so what I ah now I want to talk about another um, another example, which uh, which I find interesting. Um, is the I want to talk about Poisson structures and what it means for a big Poisson structures to be the unfolding of a family of Poisson structures. Um, so if I have a, a family of Poisson structures, that, which is something like that, I will, uh, uh, this is the family of, of anchors and we have here the, the family of Poisson brackets and whatnot. Um, So what uh, this is saying, a, Poisson, a big Poisson structure whose anchor goes to the total tension space of X is an unfolding of this one, uh, even only if this uh, relative differential, the, the shift of relative differentials is the pre-image pre of the symplectic foliation associated to, to this family. Uh, what I'm, what this says is only just rephrasing the, it's just rephrasing the, the definition of an unfolding in terms of foliations and symplectic foliations and, and, and definitions which are uh, more akin to, to Poisson structures, but it, this is just the same as the definition of, of a foliation. Uh, sorry, this is just the same as the definition of a, an unfolding. I'm just reading 
the definition of uh, unfolding of a Lie algebra in, in other terms, with other, with other words. But what's interesting here is that as uh, the, the target space of the, um, of the Lie algebraids are the Keller differentials, as we have a, here a diagram, a canonical diagram, we have another diagram that goes the other way around. And that will have some, some curious implications. Um, so for instance, one of the, of the of things that goes automatically without much, without much elaboration is the fact that I have defined, well-defined a map from uh, pi upper star, uh, from, the, uh, from the pullback of the differentials of the base to the pullback of the tangent space of the base because I can just follow these arrows right here, which I can generally not. But this row here uh, gives a map that resembles very much the anchor of a Poisson structure over S. And we want to know if that is actually the case. Um, It actually does because one can check with some effort that uh, this is the isomorphism of um, of the algebra. Um, and so this kernel has also a, a bracket and and one has to check the this define uh, a Poisson structure in this induces a Poisson structure on, on the push forward on the push forward this induces a Poisson structure on the base um moreover so if the unfolding is transversal well the this isomorphism here gives a splitting of this uh, canonical exact sequences of, of Keller differentials. Uh, and so this the splitting implies, uh, uh, as it says here, that, um, that this arrow is an isomorphism. So whenever I have a, a transversal unfolding of um, transversal unfolding of a Poisson structure given by a Poisson structure, which is not a, a trivial thing at all. It's not at all immediate that every uh, unfolding of a family of Poisson structures will define a big Poisson structure. A priori, uh, it's, it won't be the case. I don't know if this will always be the case. I don't think so, actually. But if it is the case, and I have a big Poisson structure on the total space, that's the unfolding of a family of Poisson structures, then I automatically have uh, a symplectic structure on the base of this family, which is sort of a very interesting thing uh, to me. And we see, in these uh, two examples that I wanted to share with you, that the, the fact that having uh, defined uh, a transversal unfolding gives some non-trivial structure on the base. And this has a lot to do with, which, with the things we were discussing earlier on about unfoldings having to do with, with transversal connections, this transversal, these connections that are transversal to the fiber of, of families will define, in a sense, connections on the base and, and will give certain structures to the base. In this, uh, in this case, 
it gave a symplectic, symplectic structure on, on the base of this uh, family. Uh, more in general, now, if I have, ten, I have 10 minutes, right? Do I? Yeah. More or less, yeah. 15 minutes. 15 minutes, 10 minutes. I want to discuss a little bit about what we could work about um, with this um, with this idea that I was talking about uh, recently, um, you know, about the unfoldings given structure, given certain structure to the base, which I find interesting and intriguing. And so in, in the work with, with Ariel and, and Mauricio, we sort of um, try to work this out. And from a couple of, of rather trivial remarks, we could um, we could define a non-trivial structure on the base of a, the unfolding of an algebra. So the trivial a trivial remark here is if I have a local section of the algebra uh, multiplying with with a given section will give because of the the axioms of all the algebra will define a differential operator and a lead derivative. I mean, we'll find we, we, this will define a differential operator, a differential operator on the shift A, as well as a lead derivative of the least structure of A, which are two things that a priori are completely well, are pretty much unrelated because one thing is A as an abstract shift, and the other thing is a uh, the least structure of, of A as a, which is not OX linear in general. Um, oh, so with this uh, definition remark, I just want to, to remark the fact that I'm taking differential operators with, uh, with a scalar, scalar symbol, right? Which are the ones that are for instance, defined by multiplication with a given local section. Um, so if I have an, an unfolding of a family, so curly A over with, with S, AS is a family of algebraids and, and A without the S is an unfolding of this family. Uh, well, in general, multiplying by a by a, a section of the big algebra of the unfolding will not preserve the the sections of the family of the small algebra here. This is pretty much because uh, the relative tangent shift is not a Lie ideal of the absolute tangent shift, but. Uh, remember the curly T I was talking about uh, some time before, some minutes ago. Uh, sorry, remember the, this curly T shift I was talking about some minute, some minutes uh, ago. This curly T was a sort of a Lie, Lie ideal, so it was preserved with the commutator of. Um, of the, the relative tangent shift. So if, if alpha, it's uh, such a section of curly A, such that uh, its anchor belong to, I have to go back a lot, but come on. I just, I think I lost curly T. Uh, ah, here we go. This curly T was the shift of, uh, 
local vector fields that were defined by locally by by things like this and it had the and it had the 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 property that it was preserved by Bracton with with the relative tension vector fields um, and so everything I did here with with the trivial shift with the, the unfolding of a trivial the algebra with trivial anchor uh, might very well be be repeated in a in a general sense so if I have if I have a uh, a section of uh, the unfolding of uh, the algebra such that its anchor goes to curly T, then multiplying by this section preserves the family, the, the small algebra, the, the algebra that, that defines the family of algebraids. And, and so what do I get? Well, this this guy here, this, this operation here, defines again a differential operator of AS as, as an OX module, as well as a lead derivative of the least structure of AS. And this, this operation here will not be if, if A is strictly bigger, it's if A is an untrivial unfolding of AS. This operation will not be given by uh, by multiplying with an with a guy from AS. It's not an inner operation, but it is both a differential operator and a lead derivative. So here I have. Um, Here, I have the the shift of things that are of, of um, morphisms that of of AS to itself that are both Lie derivatives and differential operators. And here is where all the multiplications by all unfoldings of AS live. Here I have. Every multiplications, uh, every multiplication by given by by uh, by guys of unfoldings of AS. Of course, if uh, Sorry, AS, yeah. Can, can I ask again? So, for any Lie algebra, there's the universal enveloping algebra of differential operators that is just the a sheaf of associative algebras, which is generated by functions as a commutative with a morphism as commutative algebras and your Lie algebra with a morphism as Lie algebras. And that's a filtered algebra, just as the usual universal enveloping algebra. And, and it looks to me like the top row there is just the first, it's just the first uh, filtrate, this first associated gradient of that filtration. Mm. The thing in the middle is just the first filtered part of potential operators. Yeah. Of the universal enveloping algebra. Yeah, yeah. it might very well be. I, I haven't uh, think of it in those terms, but yeah, I think you so, might be right. Yeah, sure. So this is what, okay. So so then I'll, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll ask that at the end. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well then, um, Uh, what I was talking about. Oh, okay. So I was uh, here, and here is where all the things like this live. Um, and so it it would be expectable that I can sort of recover every unfolding of A S from this shifts this shift over here. This quotient, this quotient shift over here. Um, well, one had to uh, to make this definition careful because, again, uh, if you look at at this remark, 
not every section of an unfolding will define such a differential operator and the derivative, but uh, just some of them, some of them that, that uh, I, just the ones that uh, uh, verify this condition, the anchor of alpha must belong to this subsheaf curly T, which is a, uh, which is not OX linear as, as a subshift of, a, of a, the tangent vector uh, shift. Um, and so if I am, um, if I respect, if I take uh, this into account, uh, I can sort of make uh, this definition. And this definition is just the, this definition is just this set of, it's the shift uh, def defined by sections that are potentially uh, the sections of unfoldings of this family. And the thing we can prove with this, uh, with this subshift, it's that it's pretty much the same to give a transversal unfolding of a, it's the same, it is the same. There is a one-to-one -one correspondence between between transversal unfolding of a given family and this and morphisms like this respecting uh, brackets because I haven't I haven't uh, said so but this uh, this U of A S has uh, inherits a, a Lie algebra structure. Uh, moreover, so Moreover, so the, the push forward of this sheaf over the base has the structure of a Lie algebra over S. And so we can read this uh, correspondence as a correspondence between transversal unfoldings of a, of a given family and flat connections over this, um, on this algebra here, which is an algebra that is defined intrinsically by terms of the family. So each family of algebraids has defined a, defines a Lie algebra on the base in such a way that the flat connections of this guy are just transversal unfolding of the, of the family. And well, this was pretty much what I wanted to, to share with you. Uh, today. Um, this is pretty much it. I hope you, I thanks, thank a lot the organizer. I thank uh, Mauricio a lot for inviting me and I thank you a lot for giving me an hour of your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Federico. Thank you, Federico. Uh, so...